I'm going to show you the first match in uh, 2018 WSS Leipzig tournament between Neeb versus Showtime in the best of five semifinals. Here we're going to watch this tournament right here. 2018 WCS Leipzig. It's the first of four events of the 2018 WCS circuit. It's uh, in Leipzig, Germany. It's one versus one, three group stages, single elimination bracket. The prize pool is over a hundred thousand dollars. As you can see here, the winner of the tournament is Cyril, and uh, the total. Uh, winnings for him was $20,000 for the first place. Then uh, the runner-up is Showtime who won $10,000. The third place and fourth place got $6,500. That's Neeb and Special. Notable participants. Here's the group stages of uh, this tournament and uh, here's the bracket I'm showing you this match right here the semi-final match Neeb versus Showtime you can take a look at the maps we're going to be watching Blackpink map the first match from Neeb's perspective here's more information on the distribution and map statistics. You can stop the video and read through these to learn more about the tournament. This tournament is part of StarCraft World Championship Series and uh, this is where everything goes down to. Uh, the StarCraft 2 World Championship Series uh, consists of these events right here. Pretty much Korea versus the world. These are the world events that make up eight best players from the world versus eight best players from uh, the um, Korea. Now that you know about the tournament and the players, let's learn about the channel that you can watch this casting on. Castings on, and uh, it's called Angel Left the Game. You can find find it by typing "and you left the game" in uh, YouTube search bar. You'll get uh, two channels here. One is without blank space. The other one <clears throat> is with blank spaces in. If uh, you come out with the channel with the blank spaces on, click on it, then click on Feature Channels and you'll be taken straight away to the channel here where you can either select uh, recent activities, popular uploads or already created playlists. Easy to find StarCraft 2 is by going into playlists and selecting whatever you want to watch or the castings themselves. If you only get Angel of the game without uh, blank spaces, just click on it and it will take you straight to the channel, no problem. That's uh, a little bit better breakdown of uh, the tournament. So, we're currently watching uh, uh, one of the matches in Leipzig, but there are a lot more. There's Austin, Valencia, Montreal. All of these players are residency locked, so this means I won't be seeing any Koreans, <clears throat> but uh, many, many from all over the world. The Koreans are here, they have GSL leagues, super tournaments. Now, let's find out about the two players. The first of the two players is Neeb. Alex goes by the name of Neeb Sunderhaft. He's an American Protoss previously turned player who is currently sponsored by Ting, Nibis Protoss player from New York, United States of America. Before playing competitive StarCraft 2, he played RuneScape and League of Legends. 
Now, Neem has accumulated over $290,000 by playing StarCraft 2 over the years. He is considered to be one of the top StarCraft 2 players because he not only won multiple tournaments, he was first at multiple tournaments. As as you have already noticed right here, 2017 was his uh, year of glory. He was first in 2017 WCS Montreal. 2017 WCS John Comping and 2017 WCS Austin and you can already notice that these are incredible payouts he won at least $25,000 by winning these tournaments individually and for example World Electronic Sports Games 2016 third place $50,000 payout he is certainly uh, winning or at least getting prizes in most of the tournaments. As you have already noticed, most of the wins are in the first and second places. So his play is certainly very, very much incredible. He was a true favorite in this tournament and went a really, really far. And uh, here's his picture right here. You can go to this website and read more about him or you can just go back, stop the video and learn a little bit more about him. His opponent is Showtime. Here's Showtime right here. Tobias Showtime Sieber is a professional German Protoss player who is currently playing for Armour Team. He made over $180,000 playing StarCraft 2. And uh, his legacy goes back to 2012. As well as Nib, he won uh, many, many tournaments, as you can see here in his achievement table. And notable are the fourth place for all electronic sports games, where he won $20,000, the 2016 WCS Circuit Spring Circuit Championship, he won $35,000, and many more. Here you can see his pictures from the interview, from uh, the actual tournaments. And here is how they both looked like during the match. Neeb vs Showtime, semifinals, best of five series. And the first map is Blackpink. Let's move on to Neeb player camera here. And uh, let's see how the top uh, favorite of Leipzig 2018 StarCraft 2 tournament has played this match. First of all, just like uh, most of the players out there, most importantly, the player Nib starts with um, hotkeying his locations. So he decides which naturals he's going to first select and as you may have noticed I selected two naturals in the north one a natural in the east and hotkeyed his uh, nexus on number five gateway on number four and his probe that has to build on number one nexus is uh, hotkeyed on number five so that he could easily build units and would be using homo boost that will increase um, building speed so things like upgrades and units would be built faster for a period of time then he moves on to a wall off in this match the game goes protoss versus protoss so the protoss that wins is going to move on to the final the protoss that lose will be considered to be third or fourth place winner now after the wall of here he moves on and uh, builds himself an extra pile in here now we could see some cheese going on here so that's pretty much a um, attack on an early game or a very very kind of unit focused attack so for example if uh, if uh, Neeb would create very very quickly 10 zealots or 12 zealots and attack Neeb and attack Showtime I mean 
then uh, that would be considered Caesar, for example, if Nib would create just quickly like five phoenixes and take out all the probes that Showtime has because it's very early on and Showtime wants to just uh, f focus on full economy then it would be a very cheesy play too. So cheese is pretty much where our strategy is out there and it looks like we already see a pylon here that's uh, going to deny Neeb's ability to build himself a very very quick second nexus. It looks like that pylon has been destroyed and he moves on with two stalkers and opens up himself another nexus. We can take a look at the units and see that Showtime has one sentry, one stalker, uh, while Neeb has two stalkers and he's running around looking for proxy gateways around. He wants to find out if Showtime is going to cheese him. So one of the cheeses out there is by creating yourself a pylon and a couple of gateways or a stargate somewhere close to Neeb's base and send the newly warped in units suddenly very very quickly so units don't have to shell all over the map to reinforce the attack they just need to run a couple of hundred meters and they'll be super quick in this way cheesing Neeb he won't be able to defend himself as effectively here as you can see the worker count is very similar and both players decided not to go for any kind of super aggressive play and uh, we see a phoenix over here however one of the phoenixes was uh, just an illusion there furthermore it seems that both players are pretty much focusing on defense and phoenixes are used for aggression so Mostly phoenixes are played very often by the protoss so that protoss could easily move on to the enemy's uh, mineral lines and take out the probes or any kind of harvesters there that are unprotected by any kind of static defense. However, we see that Showtime is expecting this and build himself a few phoenixes here and Neem is uh, left out with nothing but a retreat. In these kind of scenarios it's very important to have uh, numerical superiority because uh, the races are uh, exactly the same and upgrades and numbers of troops mean everything in these kind of matches. So Protoss vs Protoss is a very very unique game, uh, quite different from uh, Protoss vs Terran and Protoss vs Zerg. Both players know these races inside out, both players are professionals who won multiple tournaments and little things matter a lot so if you're for example 15% of entire force do not engage it could be game over because superiority in the numbers is everything. Both of uh, these players will have very tanky health intensive units because Protoss relies on very expensive very powerful units. Here we saw a proxy pylon here normally these pylons are built together with the uh, warp gate so that uh, units could be warped in very very quickly close to opponent's base and that's probably why Showtime has built that pylon. Furthermore these pylons are being built here solely for scouting purposes. Uh, there could be for example 4 or 5 built around the map to see what's happening and here we're seeing off a uh, really really intense uh, air battle very nice to see that. Furthermore, these uh, warp prisms will allow to warp in units wherever the warp prism has uh, given its, its field that allows warping. So in this way, just like with the pylon, it's possible to warp in units very quickly. In here we see that Neem has numerical superiority However, these phoenixes can lift troops and reduce the superiority by a short period of time. However, it's long enough to kill off many many troops. 
Phoenix is can all the attack air units and in order for them to attack ground units they need to lift the ground units with one of their abilities and here we see a truly truly significant battle here it looks like Showtime used all of its uh, tricks in the book so he's used his phoenixes very well and as you can see with the use of these phoenixes Nib has lost its uh, a number superiority in this case not winning that battle over here the phoenixes have lost quite a lot of health and I'm sure that this engagement has been a complete disaster the phoenixes were completely caught off guard here they cannot win against that many stalkers and Nib is pretty much on the offensive while being on the offensive he's deciding to expand and here phoenixes are caught one more time it looks like Showtime is in a serious trouble, the probe count is nearly the same for both of these players. This match is really awesome, if not for those two Phoenixes lost, I would say Showtime did extremely well. In these kind of scenarios, <coughs> it's important to make sure that your Phoenixes uh, go around the regular pathway, so the regular pathway would be through the middle, the most... Uh, closest pathway from Nib's base to Showtime's base is through the middle so you shouldn't send your phoenixes through the middle where they could meet hell of a lot of stalkers there and stalkers they would shoot at the same time at least at one phoenix and would take it out instantly just exactly what happened here but obviously as you can see here from Nib's perspective the game is very intense, he's consistently all over the map, you can see in the card what he's selecting, we can't see his mouse but we can see his selections here, so he's separating his army into two groups, you may ask why, he's keeping one of the army in his main to protect his mineral line from uh, potential phoenix attack and the other force here is uh, separated on hotkey one to solely deter any aggression on his uh, third base now it looks like he's still waiting for the phoenixes and starting to move out his army is still split in two and he decides to commit with only part of his force which may mean that showtime will have everything as you can see here quite surprisingly uh, the armies are composed mostly of stalkers however many many adepts have been brought in and we see that the showtime decides to use a different composition instead of building many stalkers he decides to build a bunch of immortals who are absolutely incredible against ground units but they can be lifted by the phoenixes and here we see that Nib is on the run because those immortals and the phoenixes are going to wipe his army of the face of the map. Now the phoenixes will lift at least four of its stalkers and immortals are going to be a too big of a match against the stalkers and stalkers will lose. It looks like Nib has denied Showtime the ability to build a fourth base out here and he will be blinking into the main however Showtime will successfully stop this offensive into his main base. There are more battles, it looks like uh, Nib decided to GG out. A uh, very very surprising GG I would say, it seems that Nib decided that uh, he simply cannot win this and uh, he simply left the game that's it uh, very very interesting choice indeed he probably thought that all those immortals all those phoenixes would just uh, would just destroy him so no doubts about it Showtime's decision to use phoenixes that would lift like 30% of his force and the mortals who would have no problem dealing with the rest supported by the stalkers was too much for Nib to handle and Nib probably figured that he just can't transition even after a decision a successful denial of uh, Showtime's uh, fourth base 
Neve still decided that there's absolutely no hope. As you can see, by 11 minutes, there are no upgrades whatsoever. Surprisingly enough, uh, no upgrades have uh, been uh, done. Uh, while uh, Showtime did have Protoss Ground weapon level one let's look at the structures here and it looks like neeb surprisingly enough did not build himself a forge as you can see shotam does have a forge neeb doesn't in any case this match concludes And Showtime has one win over Neeb. It's a one for Showtime, zero for Neeb. Blackpink has been dominated and uh, Showtime has the lead.